All right. Now, as a final note, I want you to recognize that knowing the mass percent of a particular element, or indeed all of the elements in the compound, doesn't uniquely determine the molecular formula. And to show you that this is true, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the mass percent of carbon in two different compounds uh, that have two different molecular formulas and show that you end up exactly at the same value for the mass percent carbon. And it turns out we're looking at a binary compound, so there's hydrogen in it as well. We could calculate the hydrogen mass percent, and we would get exactly the same value for the hydrogen mass percent in both compounds as well. Now, the two compounds I want to focus on are ethylene, which has a molecular formula C2H4, and cyclobutane, which has a molecular formula C4H8. Now, these are clearly different molecules. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on just the carbon. Why are we going to focus on just the carbon? We could do the hydrogen as well. I'll leave, you, leave that for you to calculate. We're going to do the carbon only. And I'll remind you that the mass percent carbon is the mass of carbon in one mole. One mole, again, is our little trick. Nothing special about it. In one mole of compound divided by the total mass of one mole of the compound, all multiplied by 100%. So let's first think about what the molar mass of our first compound is. This is the ethylene. To calculate the molar mass, what do you do? Well, you add up 2 times the molar mass of the carbon in the compound. Where does this number come from? 12.01, of course, comes from the periodic table. Plus 4 times the molar mass of the hydrogen and we add those two things together, and we get 28.052 grams per mole. Okay? So when you're doing mass percents, you always have to calculate the molar mass of your compound. Now, what are we interested in? We're interested in the denominator of our little expression, the mass of one mole of ethylene. Well, the mass of one mole of ethylene is going to be 28.052 grams per mole times one mole, and that's 28.052 grams. So that's our denominator. Now our numerator is going to be the mass of just the carbon. And rather than write it out as two steps, I'm going to combine it into one step. But I'm sure that this is becoming um, old hat for you now. We're going to multiply 2 times the molar mass of carbon because there are two atoms of carbon in every molecule of ethylene. So 2 times the molar mass of carbon times one mole, which is, again, our little trick, and that gets us to 24.02 grams. Now we're going to plug that number and that number into this equation. Okay? Again, the mass of the carbon in one mole, that's 24.02 grams. And again, this is percent carbon by mass in our ethylene molecule. 28.052 grams is the total mass of one mole of ethylene. And we're going to multiply by 100%. Let's not forget to multiply by 100%. And that gives us 85.63% carbon. Okay. Now, we're going to repeat that. And we're going to repeat that calculation for the cyclobutane. Nothing much different except that we're going to repeat it for cyclobutane. What's going to be different for cyclobutane? The molar mass, of course, for cyclobutane is going to be larger. How much larger? If you go back and look at the two molecules, you'll realize that it's going to be twice as big. So 2 times 28.052 is 56.104. How much carbon have we got by mass in our one mole? Well, if you think about it, since we have four atoms of carbon instead of two atoms of carbon, we're going to have 48.04 grams of carbon in our cyclobutane. And when we make this quotient multiply by 100%, we get exactly the same 85.63%. So the mass percent of carbon in ethylene, remember this one is for ethylene, Right? And this one is for cyclobutane. We end up with exactly the same value. And you can repeat this for the hydrogen. And you would find out that the percent by mass of hydrogen in ethylene and the percent by mass cyclobutane are exactly the same. So what does this give us? Well, what we're going to find out in the next lecture is that 
there is something that is exactly the same. So we know that the molecular formulas are not exactly the same between these two compounds. But there's something called the empirical formula. And it's the empirical formula that is going to be exactly the same. And what we can get from mass percent information is we can get the empirical formula.